Hey guys, welcome into the Poker Reborn channel. Today is the top six named weapons of the month and the winner will be entered into the year contest. If you'd like to enter a weapon in the description below, you can figure that out from there. Anyways, I do want to say this as a massive disclaimer. This list was by far the hardest list I had to come up with. It's literally all first places facing each other and it's only going to get harder to get that year reward. So I just want to thank everybody for your submissions and please submit more. This has been so much fun for me. And also at the very end, let me know how you would organize these weapons in order. Without further ado, let's get into number six. Number six. Number six is the trusty cudgel. And I want to thank you, Lee Swagster, for this one. Congratulations still on being number one in the first place. Uh, this weapon is truly amazing, and I'm sure you've killed many, 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 many people, okay? And with all these different perks that can boost the damage even further, it's amazing. But I have to be critical. Your weapon is so freaking good in terms of the pure damage being boost, which boosts ultimately the 50% and 125% effectiveness against armor. That is initial boost. The only problem would be the effect or the damage against the shield being the next boost on your weapon, which would be way better if it ended up being on ignoring armor or effectiveness against armor. Unfortunately, that's the only bad thing. And again, this is how I'm trying to get everybody in place. But for number six, this is an amazing weapon, and it doesn't matter who you are. If, if you don't like this weapon or you don't see promise in this weapon, you're missing out. So thank you again for this beautiful number six. Number five. Number five is the Deadly Edge. Now, Fluto, I want to thank you so much for this one as well. I got to tell you, in the eyes of many, you would probably say this weapon is by far, or one of the best weapons on this list. It's hard to defend to refute that however there's one criteria that does put it down to number five but let's get into what really makes it tick the damage boost we just talked about it a second ago and this is going to be something to look at for each one of these weapons the damage boost came in and the effectiveness against armor went up so effectively you are getting a boost in every category and an extra boost in ignoring armor with the aoe sweep it is devastating there's no two ways about that for this weapon i don't need to tell you a great deal about it except for the fact that it is it's just simply an amazing deadly edge <laughs> but the one criteria that does knock this weapon is the durability the durability of this weapon being at 64 is really concerning because of the aoe effects in any kind of normal battle uh you're gonna be fine but when you get into facing things like the the sea of tents or you start getting into facing a plethora of undead or plethora not even undead the plethora of the ancient undead this thing is going to take a beating or fight to fight so with with that in mind that's the only thing that really drives this down had that been higher had it been in the 90s let's just say at 90 like i've seen other ones in the 90s this weapon would easily have been shot up the board. I can't tell you exactly where it would have been, but it is definitely an amazing weapon. So thank you, and hopefully you're killing many brigands with this bad boy. Number four. Number four is the Barbarian's Chosen Bill. Yes, this thing is incredibly dangerous. I gushed over this thing when I first saw it, and I want to thank you, Gideon, Gideon, I think is how you say it. I, I literally, this, again, this weapon... There's only one knock on this weapon, and it'll always be this case, and I think most Battle Brother lovers are going to agree with this. And if not, I understand why anybody would say otherwise. Uh, I have killed a Ratchet Geist with this almost exact almost exact weapon. Uh, my ignoring armor, I think, was a set, I believe it was 71%. So, and that was the only difference in weapon. I actually held on to that for a long time to see if there was ever a comparison. So with that being said, the damage gets a boost 58 to 83, which in most comparisons with other weapons, it does go down the drain a bit. Like you would expect one of these weapons if it was in like, if it was like starting at 65 to seven or to 85, you'd be like, okay, now, now we're talking some serious damage because the effectiveness against armor being 180, the ignoring armor at 74, you were eating away. Regardless of how you look at it, this weapon will always eat the flesh of something. 
on the very bottom end you roll a 50 for damage and it's the 74 ignore up to 74 ignoring armor that's only a negative 14 from 58 which is effectively 44 hit point damage um, on, on a single strike and in an AOE of three spaces hitting this thing is just devastating armor it's getting into the health it's hard to refute this thing being so low but at the same time the biggest knock is at the end of the day the full-on damage which it's a hard case to fight against I love this weapon congratulations on this weapon definitely deserving at number four and possibly even higher up number three Number three is Firebringer's Shieldbreaker, and I tell you this right now, you could easily take off the Shieldbreaker side of it. Uh, all is taken, thank you so much for this submission, my god, I, I, this weapon, seriously, the next, all three of these weapons coming up, so much in, embody what number one should be, okay? At the end of the day, I can't, I can't really knock any of these for something that doesn't put them at number one. But in all retrospect, you have to put it in comparison. So the main thing here is you get the damage boost from 86 to 104. That is amazing. And on top of that, the 63 ignoring armor, getting that boost as well, is just sick. I, I mean, let's be real. It's, it goes from 50% to 63. We all know that the barbarian weapons, the one knock they have is the actual damage that it produces. Hence the chosen bill. The barbarian chosen bill is number four. But... This thing is truly hitting the high end at 6 or 86 to 104 and that eating away at armor, eating away uh, ignoring armor. It is truly a freaking amazing weapon. Uh, I'm gushing. So, yeah, great 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 weapon. I hope you've killed a lot of enemies with this bad boy. Let's get into the next one. But before we get into number two, I gotta ask for that like and a subscribe. If you do enjoy this content, please help it grow. It is kind of a piece of crap, but you know, at the same time, I don't want to be mixed up with the likes of Bono. If you don't know what I'm talking about, that is a South Park reference. Let's get into the next one, number two. Number two. Number two is the Skull Warper, and man, truthfully, this thing is warping skulls around the Battle Brother landscape. I want to thank you, Tall Cotton, for this weapon. I gotta say, for what it is worth, this to me embodies the perfect two-handed mace, or just about the perfect two-handed mace. Uh, I know the, the damage can be boosted even higher. Some of the ignoring armor, I believe that can be even, no, it can, it can be higher as well. The big thing here is you're getting a boost in every stat. We've talked about this here with the first three, actually all of these weapons thus far, but it's 94 to 119 is so muy muy that when you get to the ignoring armor at 63 you are truly getting a full boost across the board and where it matters for most people overall which is the actual hit points itself you gotta love this thing it doesn't matter how it hits you it's gonna hit freaking hard and uh, it's I mean there's really no massive flaw uh, the only thing I'd say is if you whiff a shot you only get one chance and it better be on, in the hands of somebody who's really good or even just the, the perks that can boost the damage it makes it even better but uh, it's very very little between one and two and three it's very little very like hairline differences and that is what we're gonna find out in just a second so again congratulations on this one and thank you for the submission it was amazing and now the one you've been waiting for the weapon of the month number one number one is Harrybert the Snakes Clobberer. Yes, congratulations, Uber Seed. I gotta tell you guys, if you would have told me that this weapon, the one-handed mace, is going to be the weapon of the week, I would have said no for Reekin Way. Uh, Two-handers are the strongest, and it really is a testament. This weapon has no flaws. Not a single flaw I could actually depict in this weapon. And here's where I'm gonna start. If you have a shield, any well let me start with this any brother can pick this weapon up and use it effectively if you have a shield bro that's a tanky brother who all everybody else has two-handed weapons this weapon comes in with flying colors on a tank if you use this to knock somebody out you use it to hit somebody one time on the very low end you're gonna do 44 pure damage okay on the very low 
end. While that doesn't seem like much in two strikes, that is the equivalence of 88 damage. On the top end at 70, that's 140 damage. Now, while that is effectively pretty sweet, on the high end you can get 51 or 52% ignoring armor. Uh, when we talk about that, we're talking about 21, 22, no, 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 22 damage on the absolute low end at when you strike high. And hopefully these numbers are making sense to you. If you get up to 52 damage or 52 ignoring armor, you can get that 21 damage, 22 damage right there. So, why does that matter? Well. When you put this in the hands of a duelist, you're getting 25% extra damage. When you use the duelist perk, you're getting another 25, that's 50% more damage. When you use Killing Frenzy, you kill something, you're getting another 25% damage. If you have Executioner, that's 20 extra damage. My god, do I have to keep going on, guys? This weapon has an absurd amount of potential with a 50%, 52% chance a 52% possibility of ignoring armor on a hit. This thing has so much potential, and the best part is it's a blunt damage weapon, which means that when you're facing uh, Ancient Undead, you're going to get into, you're going to absolutely demolish them. Uh, you get into any scenario where you need to get out of it, you knock somebody out, you can back out of it. You can back out of the fight altogether. If you're talking about using Fearsome, you can get into the health. There is no stinking problem with this weapon and on top of that as if I haven't already told you enough the fact that you're just baseline with these weapons getting 110 percent effectiveness against armor here's the big the big key the thing that I love the most about this weapon this weapon test will stand the test of time at 94 durability 94 it is I mean that is phenomenal because of the fact of how many times you're hitting things, getting into the armor, getting into orcs, getting into whatever it is that you're hitting, this thing is totally deserving of number one. I've gushed enough. I mean, what are we at? Three minutes on talking about it. So anyways, at the end of the day, I want to thank you, Uberseed, for this submission. Thank you, guys. Let me know what you guys think is number one. Do you disagree? Do you agree? And what would your list be? Please let me know in the comment section below. Let others see this content. Please like subscribe share this content so people can get to be a part of this i it's more to me about getting more submissions getting more goodies like this to pull out for you later so thank you again guys and i will see you in the next one bye